Hello friends. In this session, we are going to deal with serial in, serial out shift register and the complete detail with its full sequence diagram, with its full uh, structure diagram, you can say with its definition and its working. Till now, we have covered the various basics of uh, discussing what the basic notion of a register means how its diagrams could differ depending upon the input outputs depending upon the applications and how a general working of a register is so let's move on with let's just start with a serial in serial out register as you can see the diagram is over there and you have first of all if i would see i would mention that this clock this clock is shared among all these flip-flops which are ff1 ff2 ff3 ff4 so this register is being formed with a combination of four flip-flops that means it must have been used to represent a 4-bit data because we know that for an n-bit data we need what we need n flip-flops now another thing which you can note over here is that the clock is being shared with all the flip-flops that means this is an example of a synchronous circuit which means that all the flip-flops will generate the output at the same time and the input is being fed in serial order which we discussed as the first case of the working of a shift register and the output is also one so there is one entry point one output point and this is therefore a classic example of a serial in serial out register now next question comes that why have you uh, we uh, we have actually used a d flip flop right why not the other flip flops the answer is we are just shifting the bits we are not modifying the bits over here and we know that if we use a d flip flop which is also known as a transparent latch right so if we use a d flip flop it is going to do nothing but it is just going to generate the same output after a certain delay that is why it is also known as a delay flip flop so it is going to present the same input bit on the output after the next clock because it is going to process it is going to do that processing basically of presenting the same input at the output right so that processing is actually the delay which incurs by that flip-flop so uh, the essential concept is since we didn't wanted to change the bits we just wanted to shift them so what we have done is we have taken a d flip-flop and that is also one of the purposes why we use a shift register we use shift register to essentially also introduce some kind of delay right because we are generating the same output in case of a CSO right which is serial in serial out so let's go to its definition now with a brief discussion we have already seen what the concept is but let's see its definition once it says that a shift register is a cascade of flip-flops i'll come to that sharing the same clock we all we all uh, we already saw that that this shares the same clock in which the output of each flip-flop is connected to the data input of the next flip-flop output of each flip-flop is connected to the input of the next flip-flop in the chain resulting in a circuit that shifts by one position the bit array stored in it that is after one clock pulse the input bit will get shifted right we have already discussed in our previous sessions and shifting in the data present at its input and shifting out the last bit in the array at each transition of the clock pulse so with every transition of the clock pulse one bit will get shifted right so another thing which we saw over here in the definition is it says that it is a cascade of flip-flops now what do i mean by a cascade of flip-flops i mean what i mean is that since this in, this flip-flop gets its input from this and this gets its input from this and this from this that means they are arranged in some kind of hierarchy if i say this is flip-flop 1 then its output will become the input for ff2 its output will become the input for next flip-flop and so on that means that this will have to wait 
still this one generates some output and same happens for the next one right so this is when i say a cascade it is basically some kind of nesting so the flip flops are basically nested with each other in this manner that the output of one flip flop becomes the input of the next and that is generated at the end of some clock pulse so analyzing the above SISO figure we see that there are 4D flip flops cascaded into each other as the input of one becomes the output of the other and next thing which we observe is that all share the same clock pulse therefore all are synchronous and all get triggered at the same time what do i mean by all get triggered it means basically that when i supply a clock pulse when i supply a clock pulse over here it will be entered into all right so all will be triggered that is all will be generating some kind of output whether that output is same as the previous state or it is something different depending upon the type of flip flop used so the essential concept is all will be triggered at the same point of time all will generate some output if they do so at the same point of time so that means the that is what is the concept of a synchronous thing and all get triggered at the same time the change of output and all happens in the same time and then another thing was there was also a reset pin there is also a reset pin so what is the role of this reset pin the role is that to reset all the flip flops and thus the whole register can set to zero by bringing the reset pins high but that doesn't mean that we cannot set one of the reset pins we can also set one of the reset pins if required but that won't mean anything because these reset pins are basically used to reset all the flip flops right but essentially if you need one of the uh, because resetting all the flip flops would mean that i am just clearing the contents of the register but in case you require the resetting of indi individual flip flops that can also be performed another thing is siso serial in serial out is particularly also known as the destructive read out now why is it known as the destructive read out because when a data bit, a bit finally reaches over here in this flip flop at the triggering of the next clock pulse this is going to shift on the right hand side and since there is no flip flop over here this is essentially going to be lost so in this manner one by one we are going to get the output bits but they are also going to be lost so at a certain point if i want to know what was the previous output bit that i cannot uh, fetch because that has been lost and that is not present in your register so that is why it is known as a destructive read out now how does this work how does a CISO work? That we'll see in the next session. See you all in the next session. Stay tuned for more videos. And in case you have any doubt, please post them as comments. In case you like, please like the video. Thank you.